called him? Well, he's in the building someplace. He'll be right back. May I help you? Lieutenant Reeves. Maybe you can help me if you know anything I want to know. Well, I don't know anything you couldn't find out by asking Mr. Galt. Nice quality, loyalty. How long have you been working for him? Several weeks. What do you know about him? I like him. Keep you busy? I sharpen pencils, do the typing, answer the phone, and mind my own business. Well, look who's here. Hello, Reeves. Income tax. Get to the point, Reeves. What do you want? Why didn't you let me know you were moving into a new office? Why should I? I notified the Commissioner of Licenses. But you didn't notify me. I want to know, too. Why? Because I've taken a personal interest in you. I promised my friends in California to see you didn't get into mischief. You're an impulsive youth, you know. Look, I got a fast shuffle out west. Now, all I'm asking is a fair chance to work up a legitimate business. I'm playing this by the book. And I won't even trip over a comma. I hope not. You got a nice setup. Good view. And a good-looking secretary. You'd be smart to keep it clean. Nearly six, so I'd like to leave now, if there's nothing else. There is. Yes? Have dinner with me. Is this part of the job? It is tonight. Say, being a private detective, I don't suppose you could uncover a pair of nylon somewhere. I'll make a note of it. Working conditions are certainly looking up around here. Watch the lady hit the ball. There she comes. It's a foul ball, all right. She doesn't know her own strength. It's a net. You're wrong, lady. How about what? Step up. Who wants to hit the ball next? Right this way. Say, that was okay. That's it, folks. How do you do that after all that chop suey? My father was a major league umpire. Well, what else can I beat you at? What kind of games do you like to play? You know, we got some great playgrounds up around 52nd Street. Among them, your apartment? Oh, it's just coincidence. I haven't worked for you very long, Mr. Galt, but I know when you're pitching a curve at me, and I always carry a catcher's mitt. No offense. The guy's gonna try to score, doesn't he? Not in my league. I don't play for score. I play for keep, said she with a smile. <laughs> hey, you want to give me some change? Uh, ten pennies. Win something every time you pull a string. Ten cents, and it's the old-fashioned string game of dimes. Ten cents for for everybody. Hey. Let's take a look at the competition. All right. Yeah. 
give me another one. You know, I think I'll fire you and get me a Tahitian secretary. You won't like them. Those brass skirts are a fire hazard. Oh, aren't any of these for women? Hey, now, here's a nice secretary. Mr. Gold. Don't worry. I'm not going to fire you. Mr. Gold, I think someone's following us. Yeah, I know. A guy in a white suit, about five foot ten, brown hair, sports shoes. Ring on his left pinky. Don't stare back. Let's go. I've never been followed before. That's a terrible reflection on American manhood. Why is he following us? I don't know. Maybe he likes your big blue eyes. Look. Hmm. I'll put you in a cab. Go around the block, come back and park across from our office. What then? I'll ask our friend here up to the office for choir practice. If he sings nicely, I'll revive him. When he leaves, follow him. Let me know where he goes. OK, but what have you been doing lately? What do you think I've been doing? Well, I think you could have been doing a lot of things because you're stubborn and, and impulsive and you think you're tough. You've got some blind spots, too. Yeah? Name one. Sentiment about women, for instance. You're afraid of emotion. Keep your heart in a steel safe. Suppose you're the blowtorch type. I can be warm. Good night, Mr. Gold. Good night, Kathleen. See you in the morning. Okay, driver. Let's take a walk. Place the wall. Legs apart. Lean against it. Shell out. Make nice brass knuckles, don't they? Brass knucks ain't legal. I just carry my change the hard way. Let's play 20 questions. You answer them correctly, maybe I won't knock your teeth out. We'll start easy. What's your racket? Same as yours, private dick. It's a wrong answer. We don't go on a job without a license. I left it home. OK, let me coax you. I can do it the hard way. How long you been shagging me? Two days. I was climbing in your pocket all the time. Who buys the tickets? A client. I don't know his name. He pays me by mail. You know I can't tell you his name. It ain't ethical. Yeah, sure. You and me both were up to our ears in ethics. <laughs> ah! What's his name? 
Who's playing you? God damn Come again. Anthony Jardine. What's he look like? Tall, yellow hair, fancy dresser. Thinks he's class on a stick. Where do you live? With my brother-in-law on 23rd Street. What's his phone number? Chelsea. Oh, 43510. Yeah? Fred Foster. He ain't here. When'll he be back? Get you shagging me again, I'll ram these right down your throat. Here, get the suit cleaned. Jardine's particular about neatness. I keep this. I got a poor memory for names and numbers. I may want to look you up again sometime. Cab's taken, buddy. Him. That's fine. You should have William Powell for a secretary. William Powell? Who's he? Don't you ever go to the movies? He's a detective in The Thin Man. That's pretty hot ginger ale you're mixing up. Who was that man? White suit? Yeah. Just hired muscle. Who hired him? Forget it. You'll be better off. Got the smell of Judas on me ever since I touched him. Who? Come on, open up that steel safe. I want to know and I want to help. I can't, baby. But that... That's awful good talk. I like it. Listen, if 
if you don't want to lose that stardust look in your eyes, get going while the door's still open. You stick around here, you'll get grafters, shysters, two-bit thugs, and maybe worse. Maybe me. I like those odds. I'll take them. And I'm staying. Whatever this is, I've got a feeling you can handle it. And I like your style, Mr. Gold. Thanks, Kathleen. Having said my little piece, I think it's time for me to go home now. See you in the morning, boss. And you better start calling me Brad. Say about those nylons. What size? Nines. I'll make a note of it. Night. Good evening, Mr. Jardine. Good evening, Henry. Good evening, Mr. Jardine. Leonard. Ah, oh, Mrs. Reynolds. So nice to see you. What a lovely party. This reminds me... Yes, uh, Mrs. Cathcart's in the ballroom. Hello, Jardine. Good evening, Harley. I practically live here. I shouldn't have bothered to leave last night. We're always delighted to have you. And don't forget you're dining with us tomorrow night, too. Oh, yes, thank you. I'll be here. Where's Mari? She's inside somewhere, wasting her charm and a lot of dullards. <laughs> She'll go in. Ah, good night, Frau Keller. The wife of the Austrian critic. She always looks like she's been out in the rain, feeding the poultry. <laughs> Mrs. Kingsley, may I present Mr. Jardine? How do you do? You know Lucy Wilde? Nice to see you. Mr. and Mrs. Bryson? How do you do? How do you do? And the woman who brightens my declining years. Don't exaggerate, Hardy. It's only our third anniversary. You're not decrepit yet, old boy. Then why do I detect a rather tactless emphasis on that old boy? <laughs> I rather think we present the perfect picture of beauty and the beast. You can be a beast at times, Hardy. As long as I'm amusing, you'll forgive me. But senility is unforgivable. <laughs> Stop talking like a fool, Hardy. You're the most attractive man in the room, and you know it. Remind me to tell you, my dear, that I adore you. Quite a turnout, Hardy. Everybody's here. Yes, it's a nauseating mixture of Park Avenue and Broadway. It proves I'm a liberal. Oh, be honest, Hardy. You're celebrating your anniversary and drumming up trade for the arts gallery at the same time. I never confuse business with sentiment. <laughs> Unless it's extremely profitable, of course. But there is an exhibition at the art gallery tomorrow, isn't there? Well, that happens to be a coincidence I was at great pains to arrange. Mrs. Kingsley, if you come, I may have that turner for you. The landscape. Oh, Hardy, how wonderful. It thrills me. You know what I mean. Will you forgive me? Yes, I do, Mrs. Kingsley. The enjoyment of art is the only remaining ecstasy that is neither immoral nor illegal. Did you receive my Van Gogh? Yes, this afternoon. I, uh, I would have preferred cash. But if you're short of painting, we'll have to do. I imagine I can always dispose of it. May I have my letters now, please? Certainly. Like a Madonna, who lives, 
breathes and smiles and belongs to me. Sweetheart. Cathcart residence? Yes, sir, I think he is here, sir. Might I have your name, please? Tell him it's the guy from San Francisco. Hey, come here. You want a nickel? Yes. Here. Now shut up! Hello. Hello, yeah. Yeah, it worked just like you said. It took him two nights to spot me. He took me up to his office, pushed some muscle at me. I played softy. Yeah, I told him the name. And when he heard it, brother, he took it hard. It hit him right where he lived. Yeah. Right. like that does something to me. Yeah, they're okay. You weren't even listening. What are you thinking about, Brad? Oh, just that maybe you won't be around very long. I've been thinking about that Tahitian secretary. Well, you won't like her. Maybe not. Those grass skirts rustle. I told you before, they're a fire hazard. And so are you. Please, Mr. Galt. How about it, huh? Okay. What is it, Brad? I got a feeling something's closing in on me. I don't know what it is. That's me. What happened with that guy last night? White suit? Mm-hmm. Milked easy. But it came out pretty thin. I wouldn't be so jumpy just about you. Oh, yes, you would. Because I'm playing for keeps, remember? Want to tell me about it? No. If you're sharp, you'll get out now, fast. I got a feeling I'm looking behind the eight ball. Something's going to happen. When it does, you're going to end up right in the corner pocket. With a lot of grief. Get out now, Kathleen. You're a poor salesman, Brad. I'll be back in a minute. Be smart if you're not here. Hello, Reeves. Hi, Gold. I was gonna look you up in the morning. Fine. What have you done? Nothing. Just wanted to talk. Go ahead. There's a shyster lawyer in this town with a swank office, a secretary, and no law practice. 
a shyster. His name is Jardine. He's put a tail on me. I think he wants to finish where he left off. You'd think after San Francisco, he'd leave you alone. He will. This is just for the record. Don't play it too close. I'm still working by the book. Jardine is definitely not the bookish type. Yeah. I know. I decided to wait. I don't want you to be in that corner pocket all alone. In addition, I might add, you've aroused the maternal instinct in me. I want to look out for you. You hate him an awful lot, don't you? Oh. The man who hired White Suit. All right, he makes it easy. Brad, what has he got on you? Nothing. Nobody has. Nobody's going to. Not you either. All right. But remember, I can get brand new tough guys for a dime a dozen. Here. Get yourself two dozen. I'd rather pick you up at a rummage sale. I'm a sucker for bargains. And speaking of bargains, if you can't get nines in those nylons, I'll take eight and a half or even ten. Doesn't matter. I'll make a note of it. Come on, let's finish the dance. for a minute? I'm thirsty. I want to drink water. There you go again, pitching low and outside. Okay. Yeah. Did he hit you? No, I, I scraped it on the hydrant. Well, you better take it easy for a minute. Come on, let's go in Mr. Schwartz's for a cup of coffee, huh? Come on. Come in. Sit down. Can I do something for you? Mrs. Schwartz, some hot coffee. Please. Yes, surely. A nice cup of coffee. Brad, was that an accident? I don't know. The jury's still out. Hey, mister. I saw that car. I got part of number two. What was it? I only got the first part of 63N9 something. 63N9? Yes. Is that all you got? Yes. What kind of a car was it? Well, I couldn't see very well. I think it was a Lincoln. Here, kid. Gee, thanks, mister. You think you can trace that number? I know a cop I can call. He can check on it. Call me back. What do you think you're going to prove, Brad? Maybe nothing. I know a guy who's handy with a car. You tell me you have to be in San Francisco. You know, on account of the steep hills. Uh, the phone in here? Back on the wall.
getting late. I've got to go to Scarsdale. Scarsdale? At this time of night? Unfortunately. Such is the hectic life of an art collector. <laughs> the past six months, I've been trying to get a certain Turner landscape. And tonight, of all nights, the owner is in the mood to talk business. Confidentially, I've got to close the deal tonight. I've already sold it to Mrs. Kingsley. <laughs> then you can't afford a haggle over price, can you? Love is a beauty, never haggle over price, Tony. I probably shan't return much before dawn. How I detest the dawn. The grass always looks like it's been left out all night. <laughs> Can I drop you anywhere, Harley? No, thanks, Tony. I have my car. Good night. Good night, Harley. Scarsdale. Yes, sir. Take to trace that number. He's working on it. He'll call me back in a minute. Stop looking at me like that, will you? Like what? Is it belong in a test tube? Look, a guy named Jardine's afraid of me. He put a tail on me the other night. I think he tried to kill me tonight. Yeah, go on trying. Are you satisfied? No. I want to know why. I had a private agency in San Francisco. This guy, Jardine, was my partner. He was a barrister. Swift cookie with the women. They came in cubbies. He worked his charm. He worked a little blackmail on the side. I didn't wise up until I caught him stashing away dough that should have belonged to the firm. I called him on it, promised to cough up. We drove out to his place in Burlingame to get to his private safe. Somewhere along the road, he slugged me, wet me down with a bottle of scotch, set me behind the wheel for a takeoff. I hit a truck, killed the driver. Manslaughter. Two years. Less time off for good behavior. Jardine had a fixed alibi. Wouldn't break and it wouldn't bend. It's the last I heard of him. The white suit showed up last night. Now you know why. All except why you wouldn't tell me before. Guy likes to hold his head up. I look like a chump. That's not the real reason. Come on, say it. You're not so tough, Brad. You just think you are. I've cracked you wide open, and you know it. Hello. Yeah. What's the address? Right. Yeah, thanks. chance, aren't you? He won't be back for hours. Anyway, I've got to the point where I don't care anymore. I'm glad, darling. I'll get you a drink, hmm? Please. So strange, Tony. He loves me. Gives me everything a man can give a woman. But still, it isn't enough. 
It isn't enough, Tony. I know, dear. I know. Yeah. Oh, you're upset, darling. Why don't you drink that down? Cigarettes? Tony, I tried. I made a bad bargain and I tried to stick it out with him. But I just keep sitting, listening to his paintings crack with age. I want her to take me away with you, Tony. Please. Look, Mary, Harley can afford you, but he doesn't make you happy. I love you, but I have no money. Tony, darling, what does that matter? I have already borrowed money from you, haven't I? Or do you think I want to go through life being taken care of like a pet poodle? But darling, we have my jewels. They're yours. You're taking them from me for my sake. Darling, I've, I've wanted you to say that, but I... No more buts. Tell me when we can go. Must be soon. Perhaps tomorrow. There's some business I have to take care of first. I, I'll let you know. Still catering to the female trade. Take it easy, Tony. What do you want here? I'm just delivering a message from me to you. Lay off. Keep that tail off me. Stop playing me for a clay pigeon. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll explain in simple terms. Like a two-year term for manslaughter. I kept remembering that pretty face of yours, Jardine, all the time I was in Hawk. If you're not sharp, you're not gonna have that pretty face. You're not gonna have any face at all. I haven't hired a tail. And I haven't been after you. I didn't even know you were out. And that's on the level. You on the level. Why, for six bits, you'd hang your mother on a meat hook. Hello, operator. I want the police. Hurry, please. It's nice lipstick, baby, whoever you are. But you're wasting it on the wrong guy.
darling, who was it? No one you know. I phoned the police. You what? I phoned the police. They'll be here in a minute. Don't you realize they'll find you here? Come on, go out the back way. So the kitchen. What's going on around here? Uh, nothing, officer. What can I do for you? We got a call at the station. <laughs> That's absurd. I, I was alone, reading. A woman phoned in. You uh, read pretty rugged stuff. Who's the guy? Her husband? No. Look, forget about the dame. Who's the guy? Look, we got a report to make. If you don't talk here, we'll have to take you downtown. Officer, can't we discuss this? I what may not. His name? His name is Gold. Bradford. Gold. Go. Bradford. Fight. Parkman. Two, four. You forgot your hat. Thanks. Are you all right? Perfect. Your coat's torn. <laughs> Got to see the other guy. May I come up? Sure. Well, what happened? We talked. One thing led to another, and he led with his right. After that, he stopped talking. Mm-hmm. Where did that get you? Nowhere. But I feel a lot better. Come on over here where you belong. Oh, no, thank you. If you're feeling that much better, I think I better go home now. What about that maternal instinct you talked about? That doesn't work after sundown. You saw a nice scene. Got any other talents? I can cook. <laughs> Isn't my turn a divine? Look at it. It grows on you. You make it sound like a species of fungus. Oh, don't run away, Hardy. You promised to show me that new Raphael. The one I've been hearing about for years. I must see it, Hardy. It just arrived this morning. It's down in the vault. Shall we look at it now? Wonderful, <laughs> Hardy. I'd love to see it. Tony, we're going out to look at the Raphael. Will you join us? I'd like to. I've never been downstairs. Mrs. Kingsley? That's a real thrill, aren't it? that Italian family refused to sell, isn't it? Yes. I saw it a great many years ago and thought it enchanting. When I couldn't buy it, I became obsessed with the idea of owning it. So like you, Hardy. Merely the passion of the true collector, my dear. members of the Perichini family would have sold long ago, but the old Count refused every offer. I knew I couldn't buy it while he was still alive, so fortunately he decided to die. And I got it. Oh. 
Why, it's Mary. The resemblance isn't pure accident. You mean it was retouched? Certainly not. I found the portrait long before I met Mary, and I worshipped it. When I did meet her, it was as if I'd always known her and wanted her. Oh, how romantic. If you prefer to be maudlin about it, perhaps. Hardy hates sentiment. The light is atrocious down here. Why don't we take it upstairs, Hardy? I want to have it revarnished. I also want to get another frame for it. Shall we go? Oh, I wish we could have taken it upstairs. Meet you at your apartment. And McDonald will close the vault. Yes, Mr. Cat. No one saw you come in. I came through the side door as per instructions. Also, I never saw you in my life before. Good. Now, tell me what happened. It didn't work. It was a busto crusto. A what? A flop. Oh. Well, go on. Well, this guy Gort went over to Jardine's place last night and pushed him around some, but that's all. Somebody called the cops, but Gore got out before they got there. What time did this happen? About one o'clock. I was out front. Look, if you want my opinion, I think you're wasting your time. This guy Gold is a smart cookie. He ain't gonna let himself get shoved into a noose. And if you can't needle him into knocking off Jardine, why not let me do it? I can put a slug into him the nice, clean way. Get him on the phone. Who? Gold. Oh. And stop flicking your ashes on my rug. That's a genuine Kashan. Hello? Yes? Just a moment, please. And no sooner did he get back than he left her again. And I want him back. He needs me. My job was done when I found your husband. It's your job to keep him. I know that the man in the white suit is on the phone. Yeah. Hello, God. You got any dough? Maybe. What are you selling? I'm selling Jardine short. He's slow pay and I like to keep moving. Well, you want to know what he's up to, don't you? Tell him you need $200 to leave town. I need two yards, part of money. Where? Your office. No, no, no. No, no, the heat's on. Come to my place. 504 West 52nd. Apartment 307. 7.30. Tonight? Yes. Right. Okay, I'll tip you if I can't make it. Right. Well, that's done. Yeah, but how are you going to get Jardine to bite? After what happened last night, he ain't going to pay no social call on Galt to get pushed around some more. He'll be there. Why shouldn't he be? After all, he's one of my closest friends. I trusted him. Now, he'll trust me. But how can I sit still and watch a newsreel Look, while you're honey, going? The show takes an hour. It's 7 o'clock. 
I'll be back for you at 8. But I want to go with you. I know this guy, White Suit. He won't talk while anyone's around. One, please. Never thought I'd have to beg you to take me up to your apartment. You've been there. I'll let you know when I need any more sewing done or cooking. That's one of your talents, too, isn't it?
bread. Go away. Why didn't you come back for me? What's the matter? Nothing. I, I'll see you later at your place. Brad, I'm going to stay right here until you open this door. What's the matter? Meet Tony Jardine. Brad. Don't crowd me. I haven't got the answers, but the police will find them. They're laid out like road markers running right up my alley. Brad, they can't. Oh, I'll make book on it. Well, you've got to call the police and tell them. What am I going to tell them? That I came home and somebody put me out with a face full of ether? I woke up and there was Jardine lying with his brains beaten out and me with a poker in my hand. Oh, they'll still be laughing while they strap me in the chair. Look, Brad, you, you, you can't handle anything like this alone. Look, don't give me that law and justice routine. The cops operate on facts, and the facts are phony from here to the death cell. Now get out of here and let me dope this out, will you? Well, I didn't mean that. I just meant I wanted to help. Yeah, thanks, thanks, but you can't. Now beat it, will you? I gotta stall for time and figure this out. Now get out of here. Put the poker away. I want to help you, Brad. I can't let you. If I miss, you'll be in it, too. If we miss. I don't care, Brad. Whatever's done to you is done to me. And I'm hanging on to you, nylons and all. Brad, listen, this may sound silly, but I think that man in the white suit wanted you to spot him that very first night. Of course he did. No guy in his right mind wears a white suit on a shag job. Why'd that car almost hit me? Jardine wasn't out to get me. I should have known that from the start. But somebody sure is. Somebody who knew about Jardine and me in San Francisco. Somebody who wanted me to think Jardine was after me. But who, Brad, who? I don't know, 
There's nothing to latch on to. Well, maybe it's something you've forgotten, something stuck away in the back of your mind. No, I'm clean as a peeled egg. No debts, no angry husbands, no payoffs, nothing. Well, people just don't go around committing murder and frame-ups for the fun of it. All right, so it doesn't add. What do you want me to do, call the quiz kids? It doesn't make sense, but... What? Maybe if I could find White Suit, I could get a lead. Where's that wallet I gave you? At my apartment. Come on, let's go. What about him? They only clean up once a week. The maid never cleans under the bed. That'll give me a head start. Go downstairs, ask the gender where I am. Tell him you've been ringing my bell and I don't seem to be home. Then go to your apartment and I'll meet you there. All right. Twenty-eight East 23rd Street. I think we're gonna hit pay dirt. How do you know it's white suit? My thumb, baby. My thumb tells me. Come on, let's go. Red Frost live here? Yeah. Ground floor, around the back, on that side. Thanks. Oh, Mamma Mia! Where's Fred Foss? Well, what do you want with me? I didn't do anything. Is this your wallet? Sure, that's my pocketbook. I lost it in the subway. Thank you. Thank you. You're Fred Foss? Sure, I'm Fred Foss. A ask the neighbors. My $5. It ain't him, Mr. Okay, the okay. $5. I don't want your five dollars. Thank you. Thank you. There goes my last lead. I feel all dead inside. I'm backed up in a dark corner. And I don't know who's hitting me. Yes? Very good. Get in touch with me tomorrow. Same place, same time. Who's there? It's I, darling. Just a minute.
Come in. After nine, darling. We're expected at Mrs. Kingsley's at ten. Oh, I simply can't go, Hardy. I've got a miserable headache. Oh, I... I'm so sorry, my dear. I'm going right to bed. Why don't you run along without me? I wouldn't think of it, darling. Mrs. Kingsley will be so upset. She doesn't upset that easily. But I did promise to meet Tony there. I had rather a delicate matter to discuss with him. Hadn't you better go then? I imagine it can wait. I'd rather stay here with you. Isn't it important? No. Now, that is a problem he's eminently qualified to handle. A man of his vast experience with the law in all its tawdry aspects. You sound so mysterious. What's it all about? The oldest cliché in the world. One of my friends, who deluded himself that his was the ideal marriage, has recently discovered there's another man. Well, Tony doesn't handle divorces, does he? The husband doesn't want a divorce. You mean he wants her back? Yes. And as the lost and found ad say, he offers a suitable reward for her return. I mean, the other man would take money and just go away? When an impoverished character, unendowed with any appreciable virtues, succumbs to a rich man's wife, it's to be suspected that his interest is less passionate than pecuniary. But how could you be taken in by such a man? Take uh, Tony, for instance. I'd never imagine him to be interested in Lucy Wilding. But he is. It's not true. He's always loathed her. He loathed her rather intimately, I'm afraid. But he couldn't. I mean, she's too old for him. Love is not the exclusive province of adolescence, my dear. It's a heart ailment that strikes all age groups. Like my love for you. My love for you is the only malady I've contracted since the usual childhood diseases. And it's incurable. Is it? Milkman, Miss Stewart. 85 cents, please. Morning. Morning. Oh, thank you.
Nothing. Maybe I ought to hire a press agent. What time is it? Seven. I only knew who was after me. It wouldn't be so bad. But how are you supposed to fight back when you don't know who you're fighting? You lick before you start. Nonsense. I know you, Brad. You're not letting anybody get away with oh, this. Don't be too sure. Worked before. I could be framed easier than Whistler's mother. All right. All right. We'll just sit down and feel sorry for you. We'll build a wailing wall. Okay, okay. Don't give me that Pollyanna routine either. About how everything's going to be fine. I'm no miracle man. That maid comes to my apartment and hits bingo under the bed. I'm as good as cooked. Here, drink this. Look at me. Tower of strength, nerves of steel. Don't bother, Brad. The stain will come out. Stain. The ink, baby, the ink. I smeared ink on his white suit up my office. What of it? He'd have to have the suit cleaned, wouldn't he? The cleaners would have his address, wouldn't they? Well, this is a pretty dirty town. Cleaning places grow on every street like mushrooms. Yeah, but they don't do their own cleaning. Where's the classified? There. They farm the stuff out to the big cleaning and dye plants. There can't be too many of them. What if he didn't have the suit cleaned? He wouldn't run around town in an ink-stained suit. It ain't me. That's a pretty long list. We'll each take half of it. It's a little early in the season for white suits, so we ought to be able to find it if we have it. There's a five spot in it for you if you do. Get moving. We had a couple of white suits, but none with ink on them. suits. Sorry. Guide. These are the contracts, and this is your dental appointment. Cathcart Galleries? Yes. A Mr. Smith from San Francisco? Oh, yes. Uh, that will be all. Yes? Look here, there's nothing in the papers, not a word. I told you that deal went through, and it did go through. Can I help it if they ain't found the shipment yet? Well, it sounds very odd to me. You're positive nothing went wrong. What do you want me to do, take out an ad? Listen, Cathcart. We better get this deal settled today, or I'm coming down to the galleries. And right through that front door. I tell you what. I have a 3 o'clock dental appointment in the Grant Building. Meet me there. Wait a minute. Grant Building, 31st floor, 3 o'clock. Okay. Hello? Yeah? Fire at warehouse. No. 
No, not a sear sucker. A white linen suit. Car 15. Yeah. Thanks. Car 15. 1164 Broadway. Empton Robbery. Car 21, fire in the warehouse. I go. You got your Boy Scout oath, didn't you? I thought you were going to lay off, Charlie. I'm clean, Reeves. That's on the level. Sure, sure, I believe you. Anyway, you didn't press charges. I don't blame you for mussing them up, Gold, but breaking in and wrecking his furniture. I'm gonna have to take your merit badge away from you if you don't lay off. Just thought I'd let you know. Thanks. Thanks. That's right. Yes, that's the suit. What name? What name did he give? Just a minute. Huh. Yes, I have it. What address? Oh, thanks, mister. I'm sending you 10 bucks. No, 20. Brad, we found it. Great. Martha? Where's Martha? What? Where's Martha? Oh, she ain't here no more. She quit yesterday. Well, good riddance. Yes, sir. Man named Stoffer live here. Sort of a heavy set guy. He left half an hour ago. Bags and all. Where'd he go? Cop? No. Please, lady, where'd he go? It's important. I know. You do, honey? Tell me, where'd he go? Don't mind her, mister. She don't know nothing. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I heard him on the telephone. Well, tell him then. Honey, would you like a nickel? Here. Where'd he go? He went to a building. What building? Same as the president. The one with the beard. Lincoln Building? Uh-uh. Grant Building? Uh-huh. He was sick. Was he? He said he was going to get his cascara at the gallery. Can he get cascara at a gallery? I don't know, honey. Here. Okay, we're in the clear. I can't understand why there hasn't been a word in the papers. You're positive nothing went wrong. When I do a job, I do a job. They just ain't found him yet. I came straight here from the bank. I didn't have a chance to count it. Oh.
Take a Brody. Brother, he came out of there like a hot ribbon. I still got his bags in my hack. You know, it's a funny thing. I never yet seen one of those guys bounce. Hey, you! Come back here! Hey, stealing my can! There goes the ball game. Not a card, not a letter, nothing. I play tag with a 38 to get this stuff, and this trail stops cold on the Fifth Avenue sidewalk. He'll never even be identified. Keep pitching, Brad. You'll get a break. Listen, the cleaner found the suit. He gave me Stopper's name and address. The little girl told me Stopper had gone to the Grant building. What more break can I ask for? I may be stupid, but I know when I'm licked. Well, I'm not licked. Nobody asked you to be. Baseball fry. I can't help that. Yes, you can. You can use your head. Think hard. For instance, what else did that kid tell you? Nothing. Nothing that made sense. Well, what was it? Oh, something about Stopper had to get his cascara at the gallery. Okay, figure that one. Cascara at the galleries. Cascara. You don't even get cascara at the galleries. Maybe he was sick and he went to see a doctor at the Grant Building. Brad, there's an art gallery. I've seen their ad in the paper. It's on Fifth Avenue. There it is, Cathcart Galleries. Cathcart Galleries. Cathcart Galleries. What would Stopper have to do with an art gallery? Well, I don't know, but maybe that's the point. He wouldn't unless there was some connection. You got something there. Up in Jardine's apartment. I remember now. There was a painting just unwrapped. Here's Reeves. Get this stuff out of the way, quick. I'll go down the back way. You stay put. I'll meet you at your place later. Where will you be? I'll be absorbing culture at the cat card galleries. I don't want to die ignorant. Where's Gold? 
He isn't here, Lieutenant. Uh, anything you want me to tell him? Yeah. You can tell him goodbye. He's going to the chair for murder. closing time, but if I could be of any help to you. Yes, you can. You can take the tour with me. Tell me about the paintings. And I'd like to ask you some questions. I'm at your service. Uh, oh, uh, has Mr. Pagicelli been in today? The great Dutch critic? I don't believe I know him. Well, he's a big, beefy guy with a broken nose. He wears a white suit, even though it's early in the season. Are you sure you haven't seen him here? No, I'm sure I haven't. Maybe you'd care for something like this. Uh-uh. I don't think so. She looks like she's been stuffed with K-pop. Close the vault, Mr. Cathcart. Everybody's gone. Just one customer. Miss Dennis is with him. You may go now. I'll lock the vault myself. There's something I want to put away. Good night, Mr. Cathcart. Good night. This is one of Donatello's finest pieces. How much is it? $40,000. Wrap it up. You mean you'll take it? How much for the pedestal? Well, it's just one of our ordinary pedestals. I know, but I've got to have it. By the way, who owns this place? Mr. Hardy Cathcart. Is he in? Oh, I believe so. I realize this small sale doesn't entitle me to any unusual consideration. But I'd like to see him. Why, certainly. Would you follow me, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Cathcart must be in the vault. If you'll just make yourself comfortable. I will, thanks. I'll tell him you're here. I'm sure he'll be right up. No hurry. Cathcart. Yes? There's a gentleman in your office who wishes to purchase the Donatello. He uh, wants the pedestal, too. That can be arranged. I believe he wants to take it with him. He asked me to wrap it up. Wrap it up? The Donatello? Yes, sir. I'll attend to it myself. Uh, you may go now, Miss Dennis. Good night. Good night. Mr. Cathcart will only be a minute. Thanks. Would you care for a glass of sherry? No, thanks. Never touch it. Well, then, good night. Good night. Sorry, I thought my husband was here. Mrs. Cathcart? Yes? Your husband's down the vault. He'll be up in a minute. Thank you.
I believe we have a mutual acquaintance, Mrs. Cathcart. Yes? Anthony Jardine. Yes, he's a very good friend of my husband. Have you seen him lately? Oh, not for several days. I'm afraid you won't be seeing him for a long, long time. He's been murdered. Murdered? Oh, no. That's what I came to see your husband about. Hardy? Hardy did it. How dare you touch her? Keep your hands off her. Cathcart, huh? It's good to see you out in the open at last. It cuts you down a size. Way down. Strange, Mr. Galt. Seeing you here causes me to revise my opinion of you. It's gone up. Now. Oh. Shall we go? I prefer privacy. What for? For our little chat. Downstairs. You came to see me, Mr. Galt. About the Donatello, wasn't it? Actually, I'm interested in a piece of modern art. Something stiff as a statue by now. It was finished the night before last. I think it belongs in your collection. A Tony Jardine. Nonsense. I never handle anything as worthless as a Jardine. No, you mishandled it. Did I? When it was found in your apartment, Perhaps it was delivered to the wrong collector. Sure you can't claim it? Positive. Actually, this Jardine really belongs to you. You paid to have it done. Did I, Mr. Gold? Somebody had to pay that muscle artist to brush him off. Or didn't you ever pay him? Perhaps you launched him out the window down to the street to get what was coming to him. Mr. Gold, your imagination is beginning to bore me. Step in there. Kath Carter, listen to me. You can't get away with this. Can't I? You're a criminal. I apprehended you. What about your wife? She knows you bumped off her boyfriend. You think she's gonna keep quiet? What my wife thinks or does is no concern of yours. Leave her out of it. Jardine's corpse was found in your apartment. And that ends it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not by a long shot. You pin the evidence on me, but when the police finish digging, they'll find out you had a better motive. That's the only sensible thing you've said so far. I dare say, brought to trial, our respective motives would make an interesting case. Who knows? It might even have the distinction of reaching the highest court. But unfortunately, Mr. Galt, you won't be around to hear the decision. Now, get in there. Hey, Mac, do you suppose anybody in his right mind ever buys a piece of junk like that? Sure they do. That is art. Thanks, Reeves. Good night, Reeves. Good night, Gold. I'll see you at the office first thing in the morning. Uh, yeah. Would you make that a little later in the day? We have a date in the morning at the city hall. <laughs> he hasn't asked me yet, but I told him from the beginning I was playing for keeps. 
Well, there you have it, Reeves. Looks like it'll have to be tomorrow afternoon. Okay, I'll see you then. And uh, congratulations. Thanks. Good night. Good night.